Pagan Circus, the show of shows. Christine Hagen suffers another disappointment at the hands of Grant Andrews when she learns that his promise to give himself up to the police was merely a ruse to escape the law. Even more serious is the fact that the police in Sydney are anxious to contact the woman who warned Andrews, and the family suspect that Louis Little, tiny dwarf with the circus, knows this woman to be Christine. Two days before the circus opens, Christine opens the morning paper to find a description of herself in connection with the Andrews case. She announces that she'll tell the truth to the police, but her talk with Gail is interrupted by the entrance of Louis Little. Yes, Miss Hagen. This morning I found the news very interesting. I might say I read the newspaper right through down to even the smallest paragraph. Just what do you mean by that? What I say? Surely there is no law in this state against reading the newspaper? Of course there isn't. I am glad to hear it. I am, you know, a particularly law-abiding citizen. I feel it is everyone's solemn duty to respect and obey the law. Otherwise, one can so easily get into trouble. Mr. Little? Yes? You said you wanted to see my father. That is so. You will find him with Mr. Cameron over on the lot. Now you know that, there seems no reason why we should waste each other's time. I quite agree. And uh, I understand perfectly how you feel. How I feel? About what? Uh, having a perfect stranger intrude upon what was obviously a very private conversation. Uh, pray accept my most humble apologies. Dear lady. Chris. Well, he knows. I'm afraid he does, Gail. I know, he's playing with us. Like a cat with a mouse. Horrible, detestable little man. That was a very good description of him, Gail. A cat? Yes. Soft, purring, slinky. And like a cat, he keeps his true feelings to himself. You never really get his true character. Just now it... It suits him, him to be polite. But I wonder when he'll show his claws. I don't know. That's the trouble with a creature like Louis Little. He isn't normal. He doesn't fit in with a standard pattern of behaviour. There's that business at the trunk last night. You mean Jim and I? Yes. Knowing Louis Little, you'd have expected him to be very angry about that burglary. But Dad tells me he was just purry, smarmy, willing to forgive and forget. And that's not like him. No. That dwarf is planning mischief, Gail. Black mischief. What it is, I don't know, because no one can see behind those beady little eyes. But underneath that smooth, polite exterior, he hates us all. But the boys have done nothing. David or Robin. He probably hates them most of all. Because they've something he can never have. Strong, healthy and full-grown. I think that little man's mind is as stunted as his body. And I wish to heaven he'd never set foot inside our circus. Chris. Yes? Aren't you treating him rather too seriously? No, Gail. I've talked these things over with other circus people and they all agree. Freaks. And we must admit that Little is a freak. Are generally troublemakers in an outfit. Seems to be their own way of getting back on nature for the malicious joke it's played with their appearance. Then Dad must get rid of him. I agree. Don't forget we open on Saturday. If the dwarf and his partner go now, it's going to upset the entire bill. But I don't think it's going to be easy to get rid of Mr. Little. Why not? He believes that his knowledge will keep him in the circus. You mean that he'd hold that over Dad's head? Well, of course he would. He's forgotten one thing. I've only to walk into the nearest police station and tell the truth, and his secret isn't worth repeating. But you wouldn't do that, Chris. Think of the disgrace. It'd just about kill Dad if this came out. Oh, I've considered all that. No, Chris. There must be some other way out of this mess. Oh, there must be. 
We can only be patient. Once more than patience, Gail. But somehow, if you had the courage to wait, these things, well, they always straighten themselves out. I've noticed that, Chris. Suddenly, out of the blue, something quite unexpected happens. Gail, dear, that's what you call wishful thinking. Perhaps it is. But promise me something, Chris. Promise me you won't do anything rash. That you'll talk this over with Dad. Promise. <sighs> All right, Gail. Now, don't worry. I promise. Uh, this is your van, Jim. I say. Oh, this is grand, Mr. Hagen. I had it brought over to the lot yesterday. You'll notice it's near enough to the big top to let you keep an eye on things there, but not close enough to let the noise distract you. Well, now I really feel I am managing a circus. My own van, my name on the door. Hmm, there'll be some furnishings arriving this morning, a desk and some chairs and a small combination safe. And that can stand uh, over there in the corner. Uh, Mr. Hagen. Well, my boy. This morning before I left the house, Gail told me she had a talk with you about that business of the trunk last night. Yes, uh, my daughter told me the true reason you went to Little's room. I know it was an attempt to help me, but I still think it was a foolish idea. I suppose we all make mistakes. And that's the reason I'd prefer the whole matter forgotten. Particularly as Little gave me a perfectly natural explanation when I opened the trunk myself. You uh, found it empty, I believe, sir. Well, naturally. They were using the equipment it contained over here for a rehearsal last night. Anyway, that's all in the past. Now, let's get down to business. Are they the box plan sheet you brought? Yeah, here they are. Mm, how is the booking? Oh, couldn't be better. First week's almost solidly booked out. Monday's the only off night. The bookings lap over well into the following week, see? Hmm, yes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very encouraging. The newspaper reviews will probably make a difference, uh, provided they're favourable. Could there be anything else? Uh, it doesn't do to anticipate. However, we can only hope that things will go... Come in. Oh, hello, Miss Peterson. Hello, boss. Uh, Jim, this is Mr. Peterson, head foreman. <laughs> I remember Mr. Cameron when he first came to the circus, back there in Archerville. Never guessed then that he'd finish up in Mr. David's shoes. I only hope I fill them as well. There never was a manager like Mr. David. Why he wanted to turn this up to go drawing things on bits of paper, well, it well, beats me. Well, the life he wants, I suppose. Well, now, what's your trouble? Uh, just a few things I wanted to clear, Mr. Hagen. Now, uh, what goes on after that there aerial act? Why, uh, Giuseppe, the knife thrower. Mm -hmm. We want a ring turn so that your boys can get the net out of the way when the barlows are finished. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, uh... This new juggler chap. Uh, Major Madden? Yeah. How does his character work? Full floods or spots? Well, both. Well, he's supposed to give me a light plot for his act, but I haven't seen it yet. Oh, well, get on his tail, will you, boss? These characters promise you the world, you know. If it's left to him, we'll be rigging lights two minutes before the parade. <laughs> Leave that to me. <laughs> I'll make a note to see him in the morning. Well, is there anything else, Peterson? Uh, just one more. That, uh, sawn-off Tom Thumb. Well, very little. Yeah. Where's his place on the bill? He comes on in the first half, followed by the clowns. That'll give you a chance to clear away all his equipment. What equipment? Oh, surely you must remember. He was rehearsing with it in the big top last night. Oh, no, he wasn't. What's this? Well, that little joker was rehearsing all right last night, but it was just the same act as he did back there in Carnarvon. Oh, that's nonsense. He's got a completely new turn in his act. He uses some very valuable and secret equipment. Well... What sort of equipment, boss? Well, that's one reason I came across here this morning. Little's going to run through his new act to show me. You mean, you haven't seen it yet? Well, uh, not this particular turn. It's supposed to be so sensational that he didn't want to reveal it until a few days before we opened. But I understood he had a run through last night. Not with no new turn, boss. I was in there in the ring all the time with the rest of the boys. It's exactly the same act as he did up country. You ask him. Oh, all right, Peterson. I'll look into this. Is there anything else? No, boss. Everything's Jake near my end. I'll see you later. Now, whatever do you make of that, Jim? 
One thing is perfectly clear, Mr. Hagen. Whatever Luttrell keeps in that trunk, it certainly isn't any new equipment. Then why should he tell me a deliberate lie? Uh, the more I think of it, the less I like it, sir. Little wouldn't tell you the truth about that trunk because he didn't dare. That means he's hiding a pretty guilty secret. But Jim, what makes you... And don't you see, Mr. Hagen, he thought that he was being decent by not reporting that burglary to the police. But it begins to look as though a police investigation was the last thing he wanted. Naturally, the police would ask questions. Questions that Mr. Louis Little might find very embarrassing to answer. Ah, oh, but wait a minute, Jim. Let's not jump our horses. I had the evidence of my own eyes that the trunk was empty last night. Of course it was, sir. Why, of course. Remember that Louis Little stayed in that room of his with the excuse of tidying it up? Yes. Well, that's all it was. An excuse to be alone with his partner for a few moments after we left. Only a few moments. But long enough to tell Hanson to empty the trunk and hide whatever it contained somewhere else in the room. Ah, then he anticipated a search. That was his whole scheme. To protest injured innocence. And as final clinching evidence, have you, owner and proprietor of Hagen Circus, open the trunk for yourself. He knew that no one would dare to question him after that. Hmm. Then it seems I've been the victim of a very clever plot. Clever and dangerous. I think that's the description that fits the dwarf to a T. And while it's no business of mine, Mr. Hagen, I'd toss Little and his partner right out of the show and... Hello. Uh, taxi driving onto the lot. Oh, might be Christine. Well, someone's getting out. It's Louis Little and his partner. Little, eh? Yes. They're both walking across to the big top. Come on. You going to see them? I'm going to see the clever Mr. Little. He's told the last of his smooth lies in this outfit. I'm going to tell him to clear off this lot and never show his nose in the place again. And that means his partner too. The long promised showdown with the wily Louis Little is about to take place at last. Follow this interesting serial and meet these unusual characters again in the next episode of Hagen Circus, written by Max Afford. Thank you.